Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. Welcome back to Wind Tunnel TV. Tonight, it's the North-South Racing League. We got the Rattlesnake Hill Classic here from Phoenix. Going to be a good one. Something a little different here in the late models. A little bigger track. Some are thinking it might be a little super speedway-ish. I don't know about that, but I'm Dean Set, Joined by Mr. Brandon Bass tonight. Brandon I mean, these guys put on good shows. Should be an interesting event here at Phoenix. Yeah, man, it's going to be a short run. Uh, high speeds, though, for these late models. It's going to be elbows up, drivers at attention. Absolutely, it will be. And, you know, that it's going to be interesting. I mean, we look at the uh, track here, the really unique track of phoenix of course they change where the start finish line is there a couple of years ago that might come into play of course track position always big but be interesting to see if they run multiple grooves here or not i'm not sure if they're going to be able to let's get a look in on our point situation here of course brian hacker winning last week a thrilling event Overtaken 410 late in that race, also taking the points lead. Then you got Austin, Johnson, Gable, Smith, Shepard, Martin, Huntoon, and Dante Curtis. Don't see Dante Curtis tonight, so the Murphy Missile might slide a little bit. But the points battle here, Brandon, you know, 410 and Hacker have been kind of separating themselves a little bit here in what is a really deep and tough field. Yeah, them two guys there that getting what well, midway through the season now. Their points battle is going to be very important. So tonight's going to be one of those nights where staying clean, getting to the finish, and trying to outdo one or the other. I mean, five points separating the two. Is, they got a heck of a battle. Mm -hmm. Got to keep keep an eye on Austin back there. He can sneak up and get him a win tonight and close in big on him if they have some troubles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Could be a big thing here. I mean, Austin could have a big night. You got Hacker starting at the back, I believe. EOL for winning the last race. You know, a little bit of a penalty, but we've seen what Hacker can do. Maybe he can get up here and get himself back in great shape. We'll have to wait and see. Right now, we got everybody coming in, ready to do our redraw. We bring in Sam Maxwell. Sam, a little something different tonight here at Phoenix. Yeah, man, this is one of my favorite tracks. I do well here. I got a lot of wins under my belt. It fits this, this place. I really enjoy it. I hope you guys have just as much fun as I do. Man, we're hoping so too, Sam. I mean, it's going to be interesting. I don't know if I've seen the late models out here, so we'll have to wait and see how this goes. But we're going to get right into our redraw. You know, our top eight from qualifying come in here for the redraw to see what order they'll start in. And Sam, let's get her going. Who we got? All right, the first one qualifying in second is Gulame Fortin. Gulame 410 qualifying second. I'm assuming, you know, maybe Hacker or someone beat you 410. And we know what happened last week. You looking for a little revenge here? Yeah, hopefully I can beat him tonight. But I don't really like this track with those cars. So hopefully I'm just here at the end. Well, a true tra traditionalist, you know, late model guys will resist this Phoenix, but you got to race it. Big championship opportunity, Gilloway. Why don't you go ahead and give us a pick, and, hey, maybe you can start out front here. Yeah, well, I took number three all season long, so I'm going to stick with it, and I'll take three. All right, no surprises here. Number three, doing it for Dale one more time. Oh, it's going to be seventh for you. Oh, not too bad. It's a big track, so hopefully we can get to the front. Absolutely. Hopefully we can. All right, Ilame. So you'll be starting in seventh position. Who we got up next, Sam? Next we have the 38, Brian, uh, Ryan Johnson. Sorry. Ryan Tiny Horse Johnson. If I'm not mistaken, Ryan, have you been shut out this season? I mean, it's time for a victory, isn't it? I got one win. It was uh, Iowa. but uh, it... My mistake. It's all right. Uh, some people are going to call that not a win. So, 
Well, I mean, I'll call it a win. And heck, maybe you can get one here tonight, and I'll call that a win too. You got to be liking this. I mean, you're kind of a NASCAR guy. You've driven some of these. Uh, how are you feeling about this track? I like Phoenix overall. Uh, I didn't know what to expect with these cars here. I'm still pretty pretty green to these cars, so it's it's going to be interesting. I, in practice, it felt like it was kind of kind of teetering between loose and tight, but we'll see what happens. All right. Well, let's see what happens in this draw. Anything but three. Uh, let's go with uh, the other part of my number, eight. Eight it is. Let's have a look at her. Oh, quick draw. Second place for you tonight, Ryan. I'll take it. All right, sir. Good luck out there. Sam, who we got? Next qualifier up is the 46, Philip Martin. Philip Martin looking for that victory. Philip, so close so many times. Is tonight the night? Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, I'm not a big fan of this place. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, that's automatic victory right there. As soon as you say you don't <laughs> like something, that's the way it works, Philip. Right. Well, let's hope so. All right. Well, start your good luck right now. Anything but three or eight. Uh, let's go with the six. Number six it is. Wow. Quick reveals here tonight. It's going to be fourth place for you tonight, Philip. Ah, cool. All right, brother. Best of luck out there. Sam, who we got? Next up the 91, Adam Gable. Adam Gable. Been, you know, showing some great speed out there. I think maybe a little snake bit like uh, Philip there. You looking forward to getting out here on Phoenix? No. <laughs> Lots of no's. You know what I love about this league? Everybody very honest out here. So a little resistant to the change. It's a chance for something different. I mean, what have you learned about the track? Uh, a lot of nothing. Whoever picked this track, yeah. I don't know what the hell they were thinking. Wow. A straight hate coming from Mr. Yeah. Gable. I got him. Hey, let's get her on here. Anything but three, eight, or six. Let's do two. Number two. Let's see where we get. It's going to be six for you tonight. I'll do it. All right, Adam. You go and do it. Suck it up and get one. Do it for the Gipper. All right. Sounds good. All right, brother. Who's up, Sam? Next up, the 89 of Dustin Shepard. Dustin Shepard. You know, last week, Dustin, we were watching you. We're always talking about how you want to get out there and drive hard. You don't really care much about the tires. Looked like you were pretty good on the long run last week. Yeah, I mean, I said I'm decent at that track, and said I made it 144 last before I blew the tire. So I, <laughs> I don't know what I learned, but uh, we'll see what happens tonight. And I picked this track today for the hate for the for the rest of the league. All right, I, I love it. I like, I, like, I, like twist the, I like to twist the panties a little bit, you know. I like it. Yes, get those panties in a bunch. I love the way you're talking right now. I like your chances. Heck, I'm just going to give you the poll. Forget the draw. No, no, you got to draw for it. Oh, yeah. Uh, one, four, five, or seven. Well, let's go with the one. Number one, looking for Maybe one, one for one. I don't know. We'll see. Or to be eight. Know. That's already gone. I don't even know. Uh, going to be fifth, my friend. Eh, that's all right. All right. Best of luck to you. I like the attitude. Thank you. All right, Sam, who's up? Next up, we have the 15 of Matt Cook. Matt Cook up here looking to do something here tonight. How we feeling, Matt? Oh, I, you know, it doesn't matter the track. I feel the same. Just try to come in and, and do the best I can and try not to wreck the fast guys. Well, you are the fast guy, so don't wreck yourself tonight, Matt. Well, sometimes that happens, too. <laughs> <laughs> it can happen to the best of us. Hey, the pole's still out there. What would it mean track position here? You think it's going to be big? I do think it'll be big. I think it might be kind of tough to pass. I kind of expect us to kind of run in packs today, so we'll see what happens. All right, brother. Let's give it a shot here. Four, seven, or five? Let's go with four. Number four it is. Oh, quick reveal, and it's a painful one here, Matt. It's going to be eighth place here. Oh, that's all right. It'll, it'll be fine. I like your attitude. Go get him, Matt. Thanks, guys. All right. Sam, who's up? Next qualifier back is the five of Scott Austin. Scott Austin from Austin Designs there. You know, been fast third in points, man. You looking to pick something up tonight? I'm open, so I hope this uh, redraw can do us some favors. Uh, we're going to need all the help we can get. I'm not real familiar with this track, so uh, looking for a good number. 
Well, you're going to get a good number. I mean, 50-50 on the pole here. Let's, let's get the pole, Austin. Only good numbers left. All right, let's go to it. Five or seven, man. You know we got to go with the five. All right, I like it. My favorite number, five. Oh, quick reveals are killing me here. Third place, not bad at all, Scott. I'll take it. Thanks, you guys. All right, and for, like, maybe the third time this season, the last picker, I mean, this is not a lucky crew, this North-South Racing League. It's like the third time the last number will be the pole. So who do we got taking the pole tonight? Night uh, one of Brian Bianchi. Brian Bianchi on the pole. Brian, how about that? I mean, you see that? It's the second time this has happened. Pick pick eight. <laughs> pick eight and I get the pole. Now, I like to think it's because I'm saying your name right, but I'm probably not. Am I, Brian? Oh, no, you're saying my name right. Bianchi. I love it. I love it. I can't believe it. Brian, how are you feeling out there about this track? A lot of people not too happy out here. I mean, you sound more positive. Is that a misnomer there? Uh, I mean, I like this track, but um, I think we're going to really chew up the tires if we keep running the speeds we're running. So I think we're going to have to slow it down a little bit to make it. All right. Well, I like it. Thinking about how to get around here. Thinking about putting her in victory lane. Go get them tonight, Brian. We're going to be rooting for you. Thanks, fellas. All right, Sam, that wraps it up here. Any final thoughts about Phoenix here? Well, awful lot of negative attitudes. Hopefully, once they find their groove, things will go better for them. Uh, that's what we're hoping for. Well, you know, that's that's the life of racers. You know, this is the way they yeah. are. You know, they're yeah. setting their ways. You know, old dogs. You know, yeah, we'll try and yeah. teach them some new tricks here. Well, hopefully they can pick them up tonight. All right, Sam, thanks a lot. All right, that wraps up our redraw. So uh, we've seen what happened out there. Brandon had to be interesting to go through this process and see what these guys are doing. It was, man. I, I, I enjoyed it thoroughly, though. I, I liked the opportunity to come in and talk to the driver before we hit the track. That's uh, an interesting take on the on the norm, and uh, we'd like to do it again. That's That's pretty fun. Yeah, it is. I mean, you get some guys who get an opportunity here to get a little air time. We get to know them a little bit. The audience gets to know them. And we're going to get to know some racing here in the late models at Phoenix right away because they're gridding up here. Now they're going to take some time to shuffle out those top eight and make them correct. But uh, almost time to go racing. And right now, let's get in to the starting grid now we're going to pass on the top eight because we already know some of those Heck, we might pass on the top 10 because of a couple of eols here but you got a lover ridge down in 11th uh, josh sus will be starting in 12th a little further back you got l smith dan jan Jannon, keeler eschen hoffler huntoon mathis schumann your top 20 and that's going to round out the field. So for these guys, this is a bit of a smaller field here, Brandon. So I expect a lot of green flag racing. Yeah, I would, I would assume so as well. The going on pre-race, you know, interviews with the guys through the draw there, though. I mean, the uncomfortableness of the drivers at this track could actually spell for some uh, interesting situations during the race. Yeah, it's a great point. I mean, you know, nobody has an advantage of familiarity, and it could be a disadvantage, uh, you know, wreck-wise, breaking point-wise. So we'll keep an eye on that as these guys get around and try and get things sorted out here up front. Well, Dean, it's interesting, though. You know, even though the drivers are somewhat unfamiliar uh, with Phoenix with these cars, I'm also, and I think you are as well, a little bit unfamiliar with how they react. Like, will these cars draft? Will they pull up to a draft like what we see in the traditional NASCAR uh, cars when they're at speed? Um, how how loose will they be through the corners and things, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Like, a lot of unknowns. I don't think I've ever driven a late model on this track. Now, one of my favorite tracks overall, so be interesting to see if any of the things apply to what we normally see. Right now, it looks like Ryan Johnson's starting up in second with Bianchi right beside him. So, I think Johnson taking the high side. Now, I might be a little confused, but I thought we had someone else out front on the pole there. No, it was Bianchi. So, Bianchi again getting the pole with the last draw spot. Yeah, from what he said, it's the second time. He's uh, getting kind of lucky here lately, but... Also, you know, gaining eight positions from the regular qualifier time, so that's that's a big jump. All right, P 
pace car off the track. Now they've got that long, long wait down that straightaway. Got to get into the corner here before they go green. But we're ready to roll here in the Rattlesnake Hill Classic 125. Brian Bianchi leading them through. Green flag, green flag. Green down and away, and it looks like a slow start. I mean, it's kind of a product of Phoenix there, Brandon, but it looked like everybody just kind of slowly getting up to speed. Yeah, I think that's a product of just, again, you know, with the unfamiliarity of the track, just kind of space out a little bit, give each other time to, to get feeling, feeling another car in the track and how it's going to handle in the pack like just going through turn one or two. Big battle continues up front. Bianchi way down the track. Look at these cars fanning out here. Little Three contact. Wide contact. Austin and that looks like Martin there getting together. No harm, no foul though. They was able to keep it straight. Good run off the high side from the five though. Maybe he'll try that again next time. I mean, that was a little dangerous, but like you said, the good drivers, they held it together. Here comes Shepard looking underneath Austin. This is going to be tight. Almost three wide. Austin gets underneath a Bianchi here. He's looking for second, so watch out. The five machine looking racy. I tell you, Dean, these cars look really, really racy on this track as well, man. They, they look fast, you know. They do. It doesn't look like they're hindered at all. They may be. We'll get an in-car camera here. Let's hop on board with 410 and see if we can tell if it's chipping out or anything. Doesn't seem to be through there, so pretty smooth. You see right in front of him, Shepard doing battle as he gets underneath that yellow line, Brandon. Is that something that'll help that car turn? Usually it will. Um, it's going to heat up the right rear just a little bit, though, making that car rotate a little, little harder. But it it's, can, be, can be fast, though. It helps you rotate through the center. Yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on that right rear here. Everybody's showing on our board like they're going into the pits. They're cutting so low. My goodness. Tiny Horace Johnson, your leader. Austin Shepard. Yankee in 410, your top five. You got Philip Martin on the outside of 410 right now. Seems like everybody's liking that yellow line so far. There's not a whole lot of uh, lane searching going on. No, but contact there between uh, Martin and Fortan. Slight contact a little further back. Looks like Gable perhaps on the move here. Yes, the 91 starting to come underneath of the 72 of Shane Leverage. For some reason, I want to make him a lover, even though it's Leverage, I believe. Yeah, it's an interesting name. That's this definitely cool. So almost three wide down the bottom. I, I love this fan out. You know, when they don't put the cones up there, or I don't even know if they have cones anymore, but they can fan out five, six wide. Even. Yeah, it's, it's definitely entertaining to watch when they come through the dog leg. And uh, I'm also wondering how much time can be gained by cutting that dog leg or if it hurts the car or the handling of the car or the tires. Well, I can tell you for qualifying, it's, you know, you can gain about two tenths going through there on that low side. But I think you bring up a good point. It could hurt the car in the long run, not just from tire wear, but from damage to the vehicle coming on and off the track like that. You can actually damage the vehicle. Yeah, because it definitely is not a smooth transition. It's, it's rough down there. You should uh, do an in-car view of one of them, see how much that wheel jumps around and do that transition. Yeah, we'll get that right shortly. Right now, the four of Joss Suss, he was under heat. Looked like he had some contact with someone. A little bit rough back there. Let's go ahead and go on board with Nichols here and see what we can see as he comes down towards the start-finish line, and then he'll make that big cut down the track. to start finish should cut down really low right there almost hitting pit exit 
really wasn't as rough as what I was expecting. I guess when they turn it in as early as they are coming off turn two, that they're able to make that transition without doing a whole lot of jumping around. Yeah, I think you hit it on the head. They might have kind of bypassed the whole damaged sector, how low they're going. 410 down low, battling, trying to hold on to third here. Austin on the high side now. Here comes Martin. Here comes Bianchi. So Austin got off to a roaring start here, Brandon, and now he's starting to fade already. We're only on a lap 11. Is that kind of showing track wear, or is this perhaps he just got on the high side? I think the high side's got a lot to do with this early on. I don't believe there's a groove up high for these guys yet, um, but definitely falling back from where he was running. Now, Ryan and Shepard, they're hooked up almost like they're tandem drafting in a way, going through around here and pulling away from, from the field. Yeah, well, Shepard's loving this right now. He was fast last week. He is extremely fast. The concern with him is, will he burn him up? Because Brandon, he says, I don't care. I'm driving hard and I'm driving fast. Hey, if anybody's game to guess right now at Phoenix with the late models, you know, the tire wear might not prove to be all that, um, to mention, I don't have a word for it, all that. Help me out here, dude. <laughs> no way. We're going to let you struggle, Brandon. No, you're fine, brother. Right now, we look in on Leverage in the 72. Behind him, Gable. Sus under heat. And that's Randy Nichols. You know, a little shout out to Baron there. The 69. Baron's favorite number, I'm assuming. Yes, sir. I mean, they giggle like little schoolgirls in here over the 69. They say that's usually the first number picked in any league that first starts up. Is that right? Well, interesting fact there. See Hoffler here at the back of the group. He's right behind the two of Hacker. So how about Hacker? Hacker now showing minus 10 on our board, but he's actually started at the back of the field. So he's actually plus 10. Watch out for Hacker, last week's winner, moving through the field here. Yeah, everybody would be worried about him. He's point leader going into the race and uh, making a lot of headway already early. Now it is a relatively short race so you got to make your gains when you can. Oh we got a spinner it's Cook I believe. So Matt Cook out there in trouble brings out caution on the track. Let's get a look in on it and see what happened here to the 15. 15 right behind Sus. Looks like Hoffler up there. Jan Jan in behind and Jan Jan gets a little piece of him there. And around he goes. That was right in the center of the corner, Brandon. It was. Dan Jannon was ready to go. He got back on the throttle and, and, uh... Yeah, it's always dangerous. You know, these guys, if you can roll the center, it's such a benefit, right? You get on some of these shorter tracks. This being bigger for these guys, but same thing applies in a couple of these corners, or in one in particular. You can roll the center. You can gain a bunch, but sometimes you get so good at it, you're not ready for that guy in front of you, and you get into him. Yeah, it's definitely a, uh, a challenge for these drivers to measure up the, the runs they get through the centers and going into the corners. With this high speed, they may not be all that used to the high speed going into the entry of these corners. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, different braking points for different folks here. Keeler and Cook hit pit road. Now, Cook obviously was involved in that, but there's not a whole lot of damage here. Could this be an advantage to these guys? I mean, early pit stop, lap 18 of 80, sometimes this can pay off for you. It could, especially considering how long they went green there. I mean, 20 laps in, long green flag run, everybody digging hard, it seems, and new set of tires, kid. Send them straight to the front. Now these guys do have the choose rules, so that's going to be interesting too as they figure out what to choose, high or low. I mean, some guys are going to gain some track position, but can they hold it? Yeah, for the viewers at home, the choose rule will be on the one to go coming at the start-finish line 
anybody who wants the inside lane will go to the apron and whoever wants the outside will remain on the racing surface. What do you think about this shoes rule? I find it highly entertaining. Yeah, it does. It is. Um, gives guys, you know, somebody likes the bottom, which I expect a lot of people choosing the bottom here just for the speed. I mean, that's where the, the lane's at tonight. And uh, somebody third, fourth, fifth on back can get front row, as we see now. You know, top three went to the bottom. I can't tell who that is in the, the red car there, but going to the front row now. Yeah, it looks like. Martin chose the high side. He's going to slide up there and gain a lot of position here. So Martin, big beneficiary. Yeah, if he gets a good restart here, he, he's liable to gain a lot off of this restart. That's usual. Liking it. Anticipation building here. We'll see if these guys stay clean. Now, sometimes you stack them up and cautions happen. Martin and Johnson leading them down. Green flag, green flag. Green flag down and away. Good start for Ryan that time. I almost think he probably started in first gear instead of second because he got a great jump there, something we haven't seen. Everybody fanning out. Here comes Shepard. Here comes Fortan. Gable in the mix on the high side. Martin fighting back after a slow restart. He looked to be losing some positions, but here he is falling back in line in second. That high side really working for one and two. Yeah, Martin's been really fast. He can run with anybody. He just needs a little lady luck, Brandon. And we talk about a lot. Sometimes you just need something good to happen. And the next thing you know, you have three, four, five good races in a row. Hey, look at them guys fanning out through the ball leg. But yeah, I hear you about Mr. Martin needing that good luck. And maybe this change of uh, tune coming to Phoenix might be where he finds it. We've got something going on at the back. Al Smith on the track stopped. And he is trying to get a caution or waiting for a caution nothing happening we stay green yeah you got to get that thing rolling man it might have lost the uh, fire to the engine there you might have had to reboot that thing yeah absolutely that could have happened no doubt about it right now Nichols is on the move he's up a few spots right behind him hacker in the mix so hacker continues his march towards the front Travis Hoffler is up eight spots right now as well in the 20 machine. Oh, Ryan Johnson, though, he, he seems to not be denied tonight. He's led pretty much all the laps, hasn't he? Listen, I run against Tiny Horse Johnson. He's one heck of a competitor, and if you give him fresh air in the lead, he is going to be tough to beat because he does not make mistakes. Well, I tell you what, Mr. Philip Martin sure is filling that mirror up. He is. I love it. It makes a move to the inside. So I knew if I said something, I probably jinxed a tiny horse there. I apologize for that, Ryan. But here comes Philip Martin. Wow. Great right on the high side there, Brandon, from Johnson. Yeah, I was curious to see if that, that high line would come in tonight, and it seems like once the tires got a little heat to them, they're starting to get some runs. So everybody worked themselves out here after that restart. Still battling. Dustin Shepard still up here putting his name in the hat. Fortin, Nichols in fifth. Hacker now up to sixth. Bianchi in seventh. He got Gable eighth. Austin in ninth and Hoffler in the top 10. Loveridge now in the 72. He's got position on the low side underneath the Hoffler. Battle up front, I thought I'd seen for a minute, but no, they're back to single file. Yeah, Mr. Martin's really wanting that lead though. He keeps poking his nose down through the dog leg, trying to gain some time at that high side through, what is that, one or two down? Man, the new start You're finish line. bad as me, yeah. Brian. I don't know which corner is which anymore after they changed it. But yeah, we're going to the start finish line. So this will now be one and two they're heading down into. Now, what is isn't he? He is, man. He just 
pretty smooth on the wheel and just trying to gauge his runs, I think, man, trying to size up Johnson and, and uh, see, see if there's a way to get around him to get to the lead. But Johnson holding just as steady as Martin is. Well, I seen something there. A little later turn in on the 46. That allowed him to turn down the track further, perhaps get position. Johnson, though, rocking that high side so good in one and two. Yeah, it's just hard to beat well, that drop off. Four. Now I'm as confused as you were, <laughs> Brandon. We'll let the viewers at home figure out what corner it is. We're just going to wing it. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that's how I call road courses, you know. I, I don't know the names of all those corners. Oh, man, I'm hopeless when it comes to road courses. You don't even don't even consider the corner numbers. It's just that turn there every time. <laughs> So very orderly here, aggressive orderly. I, I don't know, reminds me of my Canadian politics. We've got the progressive conservatives. I'm not sure they know which one they are. <laughs> so Nichols starting to stalk 410. He takes a left turn down the track. And I don't know if he held his speed up enough to make that work. 410 on the high side trying to battle back. I think he'll hold it. Oh, but he's up the track quite a bit here. Yeah, might have got up in the marbles just a little bit there. But now Hackler, he's or Hacker, I'm sorry, he's looking to to try to gain a couple positions off this battle. Yeah, Hacker, nowhere to go right now, but he's looking to follow the winner of this battle through. He gets right to the bumper of the 69 behind him. Here comes the one of Bianchi, Gable with him. 410 looks like he's got up the track again. Wow. Now, do you think 410 is looking for a uh, maybe some advantage of going up high, trying to experiment a little bit? Because everybody being tight to that yellow line, it's kind of, it's going to be hard to make a pass, right? I so, think for I think for 410, I I don't think he really is. I, I think some of these guys are true late model guys, man. And, and when you get them on a track like this, it, I hate to say it like this, but it gives them a chance to have excuses. They're, they're they don't like it. They don't want it. And if they don't hit the corner right, they kind of, you know, oh, I hate this place. And, oh, we got caution on the track. Looks like Mathis into the wall hard. Lots of damage there. Yeah, that right front is not looking, not looking good. Good looking car all beat up and banged up. Let's get a look in on it here. You see Jan Janin, and I believe that's Mathis in front of him. It is. We come in. Whoa, when Jan Janet just hard into the corner takes him out. Well, you know, we talked about it earlier about how different Phoenix is from where they're usually running at and everything and, and trying to gauge up the, the breaking points and, and the the time gained on the guy in front of you at certain points on the track. And that might be another product of that. Jan Janet just having a little bit of trouble gauging that tonight, but he'll probably figure it out. All right. Most of the field coming in here. So you got Philip Martin stayed out. That's going to be interesting. Looks like Suss stayed out. Cook is going to stay out as well, but he pitted recently. Schumann stays out. The rest are in. There is Johnson right now as we look at pit exit here. That's entrance. We'll go to exit. So Johnson just getting into his stall. I like that we got a few that stayed out, man. We can really uh, gauge the tire wear after 40 laps, and this is the halfway mark of the race. We'll get another caution later on. The tire wear does prove to, to be a factor with only one set tonight. The guys who stayed out now could be a, somebody who locked up. First guy off, Hacker. Johnson loses about five or six spots here. We look at our pit times. And I mean, we gotta get something better on these pit times here. So we bring up the other numbers and a really long stop for Ryan Johnson. 20 seconds, my goodness. Wonder what took him so long on the pit road. I didn't, don't remember him ever having any uh, damage. I mean, he's been out front all night. I mean, I don't know, but that seems like a mistake, Brandon. I mean, races can be won and lost on pit road. Well, hopefully it don't uh don't mess them up tonight too bad. I mean, I hate to see somebody with such a strong car tonight lose a race on pit road, but gotta gotta tighten up the pit crew. 
Yeah, I mean, we talk about it all the time. All aspects. I mean, Ryan, top-notch surprise there. Could have fixed some damage. Hard to say there. And it, we might have got some extra tires. I'm not sure what went on there as a choose rule about to commence here. You can expect that inside line to be packed. I wonder who's going to be the big mover on for the first few. Uh, Brandon, how many spots do you got to pick up to take that out, outside lane? Uh, for me personally, I'm thinking three. I'm, I, with the way the race is running tonight, if three of them goes down low, I'm going to take the high side. Maybe I can follow in line. It'll be a couple positions game, you know? Yeah, that's Fourth a fair level. number, I think. Best believe, though, if I see four or five, I'm going right on up there. No, no questions asked. So they're choosing here now. Bianchi back to the front row again after the top four, maybe five, should be inside the line. Looks like Hacker. Brian Hacker makes a big move, comes up to second. Oh, boy. That was Hacker. I'm sorry, guys. So Hacker won last week. He's won a number of races in this series. Last year's champ, hard to beat. He comes from last, now into second. Oh, boy. And Martin, your leader on old tires. I mean, let's quickly check in and see if Hacker pitted. I don't think he did pit. So he comes all the way to second with perhaps fresh tires. Wow. Yeah, good launch here. and Maybe even getting that ice out work with the new tires. He could take the lead. Start there by Philip holds them off. Suss up here with Bianchi. Everybody's starting to fan out. Suss making a run. The four looking good here. Here comes four ten down, making it three wide, heading into corner three. And he like he's out. Out. Yeah. Thank goodness, hey, Brandon. I mean, someone had to back out. Yeah, I was getting nervous there for a moment, man. That's a tough corner to take a three wide in any vehicle. You gotta love to see them go through the dog lake though and get fanned out. It looks four or five wide, you know, even though they're not technically, but it just it looks pretty pretty amazing. It's great in the booth, not so great in the car, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta kinda guess where you're gonna come back up at, huh? Really impressed with Josh, Josh Suss right now as I slur my words. One too many drinks in, the, you know, that's for Baron. He likes to drink here in the booth. Well, I'm sipping on an old uh, chocolate milkshake myself. Life just brought it to me. Oh, Get my goodness. I mean, that's not right. Tell your wife, I love her, first of all. Chocolate milkshake, I would die for right now. I wasn't expecting. I didn't even know we had chocolate ice cream in the house. <laughs> man, oh man, do I love that. Martin out front. Hacker in second. Behind him, here comes 410 again. Three wide. Contact! Oh, and that's oh, Sus and Bianchi. Carnage ensues. Oh, Austin oh. on his side. He's on his lid, folks. That is not going to be a popular move there. That beautiful Austin paints all ruined. My goodness. So carnage on the track. Let's get a look in on it here. So three wide, 410 forces the issue. Sus gets uncomfortable, and there's just no room there. Odd angles for everybody. And wow, Jan Jan and does the old rear end drill there on Shepard. Shepard looks so good tonight. And this is what happens when you pit and put yourself back in the pack. It can be dangerous, Brandon. It can, man. And I hate that for Shepard, too. Running strong early in the race, first half of the race, he was. Running second, I believe it was, behind Johnson. Dean, when's, when's the last time you seen a rollover at Phoenix? I mean, that's a great question. I don't know. I mean, I didn't know that was really possible there. But the old rear end drill. We got pit stops here. Shepard, Suss, Jan Jan, and Austin and Bianchi all involved in that wreck. So really uh, not looking to do anything strategy-wise. Just some damage fixing. 
up front, Martin Hacker, Fortin. How about Cook? Cook has rebounded from that early wreck. He's up to fourth, Brandon. Seems like that wreck lit a fire up under him. You know, he got a good uh, choose line start on that last restart as well. Got a lot on the on the positions from picking the outside, I believe it was, and now he's sitting pretty. I mean, hold it strong and possibly get a good finish out from tonight. Well, that's the beauty of the choose rule, isn't it? So if you choose the outside, and let's assume you get hung up there, and after 10 to 20 laps, you're going to fade maybe even further than what you gained. But you get an early caution, Brandon? All those go right into the bank. Oh, yeah. Or you can fare out like Hacker did, man. I mean, he, he, the whole top five took the inside line on the last restart. Hacker from six to the front row. Stuck it in there. Got second place. And now he's in clean clean traffic, you know. Speaking of Cook, he's back on pit road. Yes, sir. Matt Cook on pit road. Jan Jannon's in. Martin still leading. So, Martin, been here before. Been here a few times. Can't get it done, though. I mean, almost always. I, I don't want to say almost because I don't want to jinx him, but it's not of his doing. He's had aggressive people get into him. Things happen that weren't of his doing. Can he get it done here tonight? Well, he's got good company around him right now, I believe, so he should have at least a clean race around these guys for the lead. Now, with the older set of tires, it's going to be interesting. Um, Hacker, 410, Gable, I think they all got new tires going into this, so Martin's going to have to put a fight up, elbows up. He is, as we're just past halfway here. Choose a rule commencing. We got low, low, 410, undecided. He goes high. So does Gable. Schumann goes low. So pretty even split this time. Actually, a bunch of guys going high, which I find interesting. I wonder if they're starting to find a little something up there. That's Austin, who picks up spots on the inside. He's got to be loving that. Yeah, I wonder how much damage he sustained through that rollover, though. I mean, pretty quick rollover. Maybe not too bad. Well, it doesn't look pretty, but it doesn't look like it'll affect it too much. Big gain on the choose, though. This long straightaway, everybody thinking about it. It's so, you know, tough for drivers. Their heart rate's going up. Martin leading them down. 410 looking to take over this race. Great start by the 46 here. Wow, did yep. he launch out of there? I think he took everybody to my surprise. Oh, we got one around in the back. Wow, carnage already. That was the 11. That's Don Schumann there. Single car spin, though, so maybe not too bad. You know what they say, though, cautions, breed cautions. Yeah, and the positions are gained on this choose rule again. So here we go with the 11. Wow. Can we get another look at that? I think the 69 was expecting the 11 to cut the dog leg there as well and just hang it left and didn't work out. Right from here, and way up in the top of your screen. Wow, he just turns left there. And he might have expected him to go down there, like you said. Odd move from Nichols there. That's tough for the 11. Schumann hasn't been up there a whole lot. He would have loved to keep staying up there and fight for this thing. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of opportunity there with that choose rule. I mean. You know how popular that inside line is, but, you know, the last restart, this seemed like a lot of guys took the high side, so could be a little different going on forward here. Yeah, I found it very interesting. So you think they just they found something up there? Track conditions may be changing here? Could be. I mean, we've seen the five. I think it was rocking the high side a few times. Um, Johnson, defending the lead, used that, that second lane to 
to get a good drive off. And I uh, wonder what's going on with, with Matt back there. Matt, if he's back on pit road again, or is he still on pit road from previous? Yeah, that is interesting there. Poor Matt Cook out here. So the 15, I don't know if he's getting damage service, or he may have called it a night. Uh, not too sure. Others on pit road, Jan Janin, Bianchi, Schumann, Nichols, and Matt Cook. So far, Martin, I mean, you know, if it keeps going cautions, then it could. You know, they snowball. I mean, Martin keeps getting these great launches. Nobody's going to touch him. He keeps doing it too many times, though. He's letting the tricks out the bag too early. I think these guys are going to catch on and, and catch him on one of these restarts. I mean, what I'm noticing is he's getting a better launch, regardless of when he starts. I think guys have dropped down to first gear, perhaps. And maybe on this restart, we'll hop on board with someone and have a look. You gotta look out for 410, though. I mean, he's, he's shown that he, he don't mind being aggressive, you know, and, and coming on these restarts, you could see him. If he gets a good launch, he could very well challenge Phillip for the lead. Absolutely. And Hacker, we've seen him take races late, 10 to go, 5 to go. So lots of great drivers up here. Shoes rule coming here. Looks like low, low. Hacker's going to go high. Almost contact. Johnson goes high. Looks like leverage goes low there. Yeah, I'm not seeing a lot of big gangers on this one. It seemed pretty even between the high and low on that one. Yeah, and some damaged cars. So we only got, you know, 15 cars or so really involved in this choose. Johnson back up in the top five. Yeah, these guys never go away. They never quit. Martin and Hacker, Johnson and Fortan, Gable, Huntoon, Loveridge, Keeler, Austin, and Hoffler, your top ten. Martin, another good launch, but Hacker also got a good launch, and he's getting a push from Tiny Horse Johnson. Yeah, if you notice on the restart, little like Hacker tried to, to guess when... Martin was going to gas up and gassed a little too early. He had to get off of it. That, that allowed Martin to get out with the couple cars in the lead. And Fortan got around him there on the high side. Wow. Hacker ain't letting him go away, though. He's, he's still got a nose under him. Coming through turn three, four, fifth. Yeah, coming back to the line. Fortan way up the track there. He's going to lose that spot. Here comes Johnson. good opportunity for for 410 to make some time right here if he can hit that second lane he's going to try to squeeze in front of Johnson yeah it seems like the tail of two sides of the track here 410 likes one side Hacker likes the other here comes Gable on the bottom Huntington pushed way to the high side Keeler making a move how about Mark Keeler up into sixth position Keeler having one of the best runs of the year for him right now. He's loving it as he touches the wall. I'm sorry, Dean. I didn't mean to leave you hanging there, man, but I went to sneeze in my tail off just now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. Bless you. And uh, happy Easter to everybody out there. Good one going for Philip Martin here, lap 53 of 80, the Rattlesnake Hill Classic 125. Ken Martin, get it done tonight. He's got the toughest of the tough behind him. Hacker, Fortan, Johnson, and Gable. Yeah, I'm actually impressed with Martin right now. You know, he still has yet to make pit road, so we know he's on the same set of tires he started the race with, and he is almost pulling away from these guys. Yeah, we see that a lot. You know, tires are not that important here, at least usually. That's new to me. I've never uh, 
you know, usually new tires is just it's just lightning fast in, in respect to to an older set, especially one with fifty four set fifty four laps of racing on them, you know. Yeah, less so in the late models and the super lates, I find. Uh, fuel load seems to be of great importance, though. These guys uh, who've got less fuel in the tank will turn, sometimes they'll turn their fastest lap at, like, lap 80, so very interesting. And we just seen that. Hoffler just set the fastest lap of the race with a 28.47. Keep it coming, Hoffler. Maybe we can get you up in the top five for long. Yeah, he's up nine spots. Him and Rodney Huntoon really doing something here tonight. The Yankee back here in 11th behind Nichols, Suss, and Austin there. So some guys who've been fast but had problems back here around 10th place. Oh, Suss almost into Austin. Back up front. Martin still leading, Hacker chasing. Johnson all over the back of Fortan. Yeah, Johnson's looking really, really sporty. He's he's wanting to get back in that clean air, I think, man. He led the majority of the beginning of the race, and, and he's, we know he's got speed in the car, but as the race goes on, everybody else is starting to figure it out, it seems, and, and starting to challenge him a little bit more and more. Here comes Tiny Horse Johnson making a move on Fortan. So Fortan way up the track. Gable looks to take advantage. Here comes Keeler as well. They're looking to go three wide. Not quite. Thought better of it. Wise move. You know, let the, let the battle come out. You know, work itself out in front of you and, and gain it on um, whoever gets hung out to dry on the outside. You know, get your position that way sometimes is the best way to go. Absolutely. We look in on Travis Hoffler from his in car. You can see Loveridge there looks a little wobbly as he tries to pull that thing down to the bottom. Great racing action here. Move ahead to Loveridge right in front of him. Keeler, Gable, and Fortan. I love the way these cars look at Phoenix, though, man. They, they just look so racy, being at the top of the red line, you know, going into the corners and all, and really having to dig on those brakes to get this car slowed down to make the corner and all. It just looks looks cool to me. Now, Big that, that kind of speed, Brandon, will that have an effect on the downforce of the machine, like potentially more speed, putting more force on that spoiler? It very well could be, Dean, and, and that might be why the inside line seems to be so dominant. You know, I mean, there's just got more rotation in the car. You know, I feel like I've seen this uh, this before, this movie. Hacker in second, slowly closing in on our leader, coming down to 20 to go. I mean, Martin has got to stay focused and forget about who's behind him and just drive his line here. I think that's exactly what he's doing. He's He's... I want to say he's pulling away from Johnson, but Johnson did just get done with the battle with uh, 410, and then and maybe in a couple laps we'll be able to really tell who's pulling from who. Keeler is still in this fight behind 410, and maybe behind, behind Gable actually. Gable and, and Keeler doing a nice job here. Hoffler is still making moves here. He gets underneath of Huntoon. Huntoon, way up high here. He's probably going to lose another position unless he can get it gathered up and get a good run down the straight. Yeah, we've seen a few on that corner enter it and kind of get stuck up high. Could that just be too much speed? What, what's going on there, Brandon? It's hard to say. I mean, you know, with as many cars running the inside line, the rubber buildup might be up there, you know, the, the the debris almost, you know. And getting up too high could just cause the car to keep drifting up, you know, losing, the, losing grip. Yeah, that's a good point. They might be just touching on the limits of what's possible there, and there's just no grip there. Right now, Martin's still doing a good job. Let's bring in our time delta here back to Hacker. So... You can see just how stable it is. I mean, 483 uh, right now, it was 465. So he's actually opened it up, but so little you can't even tell. Yeah, these guys are giving it their all right now, hitting the marks, being clean, being fast. 
and, and it shows, you know, the lap times being as consistent as they are between the two. Keeler trying to make a move, but Gable slams that door shut. Keeler looking pretty hungry. He really wants to get in that top five tonight. He does. He looks really racy. I love what I've seen out of the old age of Mark Keeler. He turns down low one more time, trying to get position. Door closed again. I mean, Gable getting right down in front of him. Wow, down way under the yellow line. The 08 trying something different here. I love it. Didn't work, but worth a try there, Brandon. Yeah, I've used it a time or two myself, man. It's always always fun. It's just time for the exit, you know. You got a lot of push on the front end. You, you think you got a lot of grip through the center, throttle up, and then the car just don't want to rotate. And you're like, ah. So you lose all the momentum down the straight. And I think we've just seen that again there. For reason why he didn't make no, no headway towards uh, passing that car there. But I tell you, uh, Huntoon and Hopper, they're, they're battling it out for ninth. they going back and forth with each other, past each other a couple of times the last couple of laps. Yeah, a couple of guys having good runs out here and looking strong. Like we said, Hoffler set the fastest lap of the race a little earlier, but Nichols also matched that time uh, just ahead of him. Nichols behind Loveridge and Keeler. So everybody looking pretty even at this point. And is that to be expected, Brandon? Like, I mean, the heat cycle on the tires, are things pretty even now? Or is it really tough to pass at this point? I think you hit the nail on the head with the tough to pass as well. Um, it, you, you see a lot of guys drive up to the back bumper of the guy in front of them, make him peek down low, try to get down and make the battle progress. And it just, it falls off. You know, the, everybody seems to be on equal standing and just unable to really make forward progression. Yeah, absolutely correct. You can see it even in our leader to second place. Now they're not battling. But they are matching lap times. I mean, last time by it was a 5.8 to a 6.4 in favor of Martin. This time it's a 6.1 to 6.5. So Martin keeps running faster times. But by the eyeball test, the gap looks the same. It does. It, and, and we know Martin, he's hungry, man. He's, he's wanting that win. He don't want Hacker to come up there and start messing with him. He don't want to see no more yellows. Let's just keep this thing going. Let's keep matching lap times and let's get to that checker flag. I'm just saying, you said yellow, not me, just in case there, Brandon. <laughs> the old booth <laughs> jinx is a real thing, and we'll, we'll try and uh, nix it right here. Don't do that to me, Dean. <laughs> These boys going to be gunning for me. All right, everybody pretty single file. Martin loving this. Philip Martin out here looking to put that thing in victory lane. The 46 has been snake bit. He's trying to bite the rattlesnake here in the Rattlesnake Hill Classic tonight. And, I mean, I love the naming of it for him. This might be his time. Looking very strong, man. He, he shut the doubters up, and myself at least anyway, thinking that new tires is going to make a difference. But like you said, that lighter fuel load is really showing that it, is, it makes a difference, you know? Yeah, Martin has the same tires he started with. Perhaps Hacker, I mean, only 11 seconds stop. He might have took two. Johnson might have four. He's in third. But it is not helping anybody as... Philip Martin still out here. Hacker slightly faster that time by. This is what he does. Very late. All of a sudden, he turns it up a little bit. And here comes Johnson as well. Yeah, I started to say it looked like Hacker gained a lot of time through three and four that last lap. Let's see if he can do it again here. Things heating up a little bit. Martin got to hang on. Got to stay focused. Dean, can we get an in-car on uh, Hacker? Absolutely, we can get an in-car. Brian Hacker on board here as he looks forward to our race leader. Just trying to pay attention to when he's throttling back up coming through three and four, because he is, that's where he's making his time up, it seems like. And it looks to be, for me at least, that he could actually get on the throttle a little bit earlier, so there's an opportunity to make more ground up. Takes it wide there. He actually nudged the wall. Didn't hurt him any. He closes in another half car length here on Martin. 
Martin coming through three, looking to go to five to go for the 46. Hacker in deep. deep. Wow, I don't know if that helped or hurt him there, Brandon. Yeah, I was going to say, it looked like Martin was able to get a better drive off. Not much. I mean, these guys are on top of each other on these lap times, man. I got to gotta say, they're doing a really good job of, of measuring each other's lap time. Yeah, uh, Johnson the fastest that time by, but I mean, we're talking very minute amounts here. Hacker closing. Wow, Johnson fires it in deep that time. My goodness, they are trying. Four to go for the, for the 46. Philip Martin. Three-car battle for this thing, man. If the Hacker's able to get up to Martin and get, you know, to disrupt in the... Get get the battling and everything. That could open the door up for Johnson to stick his nose in. We might see a, a pretty exciting finish here. Oh, we might. We usually do. I expect it. Philip Martin got to hold it together. Three to go. Hacker closing in a little bit more. He's within striking distance, that's for sure. He is almost there, but he's got to do something special here. Two to go. Martin has been clean. No mistakes from the 46 as he searches for this victory. Good smooth corner there. Hacker is still stuck. Five car lengths behind. What I like about the 46, Dean, is he's consistent. He's running the same line every lap. Looks like his lap times representing that as well. Meanwhile, you got Hacker and Johnson, who's really, really digging, trying to get up to him, trying to get to be able to get this win, and that's disrupting their lap time. They're not able to continue to, to gain like they were. Final lap, white flag out. Great assessment there. He has been perfect. The 46, hitting his marks. No mistakes. Comes down through one and two. One more straightaway in a corner, and the 46 will head down to victory lane. Philip Martin into three. He is going to take the checkered flag here in the Rattlesnake Hill Classic 125. Hacker will be second. Johnson third. Fort 10 takes fifth or fourth. Gable in fifth. Keeler, great run in sixth. Something happened with Nichols. He's being scored very oddly there. And uh, in eighth, Loveridge, Huntoon, Hoffler, your top 10. The hunting got back around Hopper. That's cool. What a great job by Philip Martin. You know, one of the favorites here in the series. The guys are going to love that he got it. Not only did he get it, you know, but I always say it's important to earn it. He earned this, Brandon. Yeah, he worked really hard for that, man. And and once he got the lead, he had a couple restarts. He had to fend off a few guys on the restarts. And just, I can't say enough about how hard it is to be that consistent lap after lap after lap and and be just on it every time and and Philip Martin he did just that he did he was so precise I mean you hit it on the head he never made a mistake that was you know 50 60 laps solid just same corner time and time again with Hacker trying to run him down Johnson trying to run him down you see our results there let's get a look at these three beautiful cars here though first of all you see them all lined up a beautiful image there he is going to be ecstatic right now let's go ahead and get a commercial break we'll come back we'll get some race interviews in we are right back here at phoenix where philip martin has taken home the checkered flag he's got to be ecstatic i mean brandon i mean a great race here at phoenix i mean tough passing but mostly clean race here these guys gave it everything they could yeah, you can't ask for anything better than what we've seen tonight. I think coming to Phoenix, although the guys in the pre-race didn't seem too thrilled about it, I think it produced a, a, a very entertaining product, especially for us in the booth. And hopefully the guys on the track feels the same. Yeah, absolutely. It was entertaining. Someone who's always entertaining, that's Ryan Tiny Horse Johnson. Third place here. Ryan, the 38 machine, you know, uh, you tried your best to get up there. You had, it looked like you had a little something and then kind of hit a wall late in the race. 
yeah, man, I I don't know what it was. It, I didn't expect tires to matter that little. Uh, <laughs> I know Phil didn't take any. Hacker took two, and I took four. I I, I definitely thought they'd matter a little more uh, than they did. But uh, yeah, looking back, I mean, I guess I shouldn't have freaking pit at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, Brandon talked about the same thing up here, and you know, these late models they they don't need the tires as much, but it was a little more dramatic here. How'd you feel about uh, driving Phoenix here? Something a little different, you know, fanning out three, four, five wide through there. Uh, how did it feel tonight? I mean, the, the track is pretty fun, I think, with most any car you bring here. Uh, these, they kind of remind me of, you know, the street stocks we used to race. They uh, they have a lot to do with momentum, it feels like, especially on, like, a bigger track like this. Uh, it was pretty fun. I mean, once I had to work through some cars and after we got those cautions, um, it was pretty fun. Um, yeah, man, I just... I wish I wouldn't have pit now and I would have had a better finish. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was interesting to see about pit road there. Now, what was that? Like, you had a 20-second stop, I believe, Ryan. Why such a long stop on the one pit stop? Uh, I took four tires versus I, I know a bunch of other people took two tires. Um, right, right, right. So, yeah, so I, back to the tires. We're going to be talking tires here for days, I bet. Uh, Ryan, you're, you're still in disbelief over that. I mean, Philip, no pit stops here. Got him into victory lane, but you got yourself a heck of a finish. Third place, you know, good points tonight. Fort Hacker worked his way up here in the second, so the points battle still tough. You still thinking we can pull out this championship? Uh, unfortunately, I'm pretty sure I'm going to need Hacker to have some bad luck. Uh, yeah, congrats to Phil. Uh, he had the right strategy tonight, and he was able to hold you know me and Hacker off. Um, I with the, the competition in this league, it's it's going to be very very difficult. I I don't see making up even this. I don't know. Not I don't consider it a huge gap, but it's a pretty big gap for me to make up uh, with missing the race that I did, and I think it was the first race of the season had a pretty bad finish, but. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, just going to get all I can the rest of the season, and we'll see what happens. Man, the competition, you're right, so tough. I mean, we saw a lot of other guys like Keeler, Nichols, Loveridge up there. I mean, it is a deep, deep field, very tough, but you do great. You did great tonight, Ryan. Third place finish again. Congratulations. We'll give you the floor here. Anybody you'd like to thank, you go right ahead. Yeah, I just got to thank everybody at uh, North-South here putting on a great place to race uh you guys for broadcasting uh dcd for my paint uh, my family friends everybody uh tuning in watching and uh all the drivers we got in this league yes sir great league brandon that was ryan tiny horse johnson third place here this evening yeah a lot johnson man he got a good personality congrats on him for getting top three put on a good show tonight all right, now we bring in last year's champion, the O2, Brian Hacker, fought from the back of the field, got all the way up there. Brian just couldn't get to Phillip, man. He was rot tough tonight. Yeah, he was he was really fast tonight, and the heat cycles there after all of us pitted, and that pretty much equalized all the tires. We've you know come to learn that if you get a bunch of heat cycles. Um, it doesn't matter if you've got fresh tires or, you know, 50 lap old tires, they're all going to run the same. So I was saving till the end with 10 to go. And then I started stepping on it. And as soon as, uh, I started pushing it, I thought I was going to get right up to his back bumper. And then he started pushing it and he was actually gapping me a little bit. And I thought, well, there goes my plan. Yeah, well, we've we've seen your plan in action, Brian, and maybe he was a little aware of it, too, because, you know, I was saying the same thing, basically. This is what Brian does here. Tend to go, turn the wick up a little bit and fire her up. Maybe you closed in, you know, a couple car lengths on him, but Philip was so solid, so smooth. That's something we, we talk about with you. Were you trying anything different here tonight? Looked like you ran a couple of different lines there late trying to search for some speed. Yeah, uh, I was, I mean, I was doing my best uh, dirt racing impression, I guess. I was just trying to find different lines and see if anything, anything worked, if anything was faster. And, you know, maybe, maybe one or two lines, if I could have hit them consistently, I could have maybe gotten to them. But 
Um, you know, getting to them would be one thing. I, I don't think we would have been able to get around them. So, and then I look in the mirror and we've got, you know, a uh, tiny horse behind us and he, uh, he's notoriously good at these NASCAR tracks. So I thought he was going to come blow by both of us. So to finish second, that's a, that's a win for me. This is, uh, these, these types of tracks are not my, my bread and butter. Yeah, well, Ryan, a little baffled by the tires, too. He had four freshies on there, and it just wasn't doing much either, Brian. But, hey, good news. You finished second. No EOL this uh, for next week. That was the first thing I told Phil after I was <laughs> like, congrats, man. I'm happy you got the win, and I don't have to start last next week. Absolutely, man. Well, another great finish. You open up the points lead a little bit over 410 there. So looking to defend, looking good this season. Congrats on second. And uh, go ahead, man. Uh, give any shout-outs you got. Thanks. Yeah, as always, Scott Austin, Austin Designs. If you're looking for a paint or wrap, uh hit him up he's got good looking stuff he had a rough night tonight unfortunately um aberdeen lodge carbon junction boulder beer bar you guys for doing this and uh the guys that put this league on um it's a lot of fun to come out here and do it except for phil no uh not tonight i'll thank him some other <laughs> night but not tonight all right, Brian. Brandon, that was Brian Hacker there. A great list of sponsors a great representative of the league he finishes in second place but on a strong run tonight, he uh, I really thought he might have had a little bit more left that inside 10 to go to get to Martin. But we got Martin up here now, and uh, you yes, take it away. Yes, sir. The 46. Philip Martin. They thought they had something for you. They thought they had tires. Nothing would stop you tonight, Philip. You end up in victory lane. Man, this is sweet. It's got to feel sweet. Congratulations. Thanks, guys. Yeah, it's it's been I think almost two years since I won a points race. I've won some recruitment stuff, but it's been it's been a while since I won a uh, points race. Man, it's so awesome to see. I mean, talk a little bit about those lap like last thirty laps or so. I mean, it just looked like you were in such a rhythm. I don't know like if we overlaid it. I think it was the same lap every time. That's all I was trying for. Just hit your marks, do what you got to do to put it in the same spot, and keep it rolling you know it's uh it's all about hitting your marks at that late in the game and especially when you got hacker on you and ryan johnson and you know ryan this falls right into his wheelhouse you know it's a big nascar track all momentum so you you got to be on your game when you're racing those guys too you yeah Phil, how much were you uh thinking about hacker and and johnson back there was you especially inside 10 to go because we noticed that you were hitting your marks every lap but you talking about them now makes me wonder. I mean, was, were they a thought in your mind during that, that stint? Yeah, for sure. You definitely uh, – I knew they had tires. It, I felt like I was a sitting duck, but they got, got a couple of yellows and a couple of heat cycles on them. So it, I think that helped me a little bit for sure. And so I was just – you know, as long as I kept hearing low low to mid sixes or a five here and there, I think I, I thought I was going to be in good shape. And uh, – I kept waiting for him to roll up on me inside 10 to go. So it was just, all right, time to qualify, lap after lap. Now, Hacker, he, he did mention that he, he turned it up a little bit inside, you know, 10 to go there. And, and he he thought that maybe you had turned it up a little bit as well because you started to pull away just a little bit. Is is that true? Yeah, I, I kind of went back to what I was doing to to try and qualify. And right after that, uh, right after the restart, you know, you got so much speed in the thing. Because the tires are cool, so you kind of, kind of remember that and go back to it and just start hitting your marks again. I got you, man. Well, congratulations, man. I'm gonna turn you back over to Dean. I just had a couple questions for you. I thank you. Congratulations, Matt. Thank you. Yeah, awesome, awesome job there, Philip. I mean, very impressive. You know, we've seen you so close so many times, man. I just, uh, you know, I almost feel relieved for you. I can't imagine what you're feeling. Try not to drink too much champagne down there tonight, uh, Philip. You know, drinking and driving's not allowed. Maybe you're going to have to sleep over in Phoenix. But enjoy this one, brother. A great night for you. And uh, any shout-outs, anything you want to say at all, Philip, you go ahead. Uh, just all the drivers, you know, I mean, for the most part this season, I think we've had somewhere around 25, 28 drivers a night, and it's been really good, clean racing. So, uh, you know, shout out to all those guys. They're they're showing up, they're putting on a good show, and they're racing all each other pretty respectfully for the most part. You know, of course, you get one here and there where a slinger happens, but, uh, you know, all the admins for all the hard work they do. And I know it's hard on Robbie. He's uh, 
he's got a different schedule now, so he's missing out on a lot of fun, but he's still he putting in a lot of work for the league. So uh, shout out to Dante Curtis. This thing looks cool. You know, usually it's a green and black car, so it's a little different with the red lately, but uh, we'll keep that going. And then uh, Weltmeyer Engineering, and I think that's about it, really. Love it, love it, Philip. Great job. Congrats again, Brandon. That's race winner, the 46, Philip Martin. Gonna be partying hard tonight, ain't he? Oh my goodness. I mean, when you, I've been there before, I think we all have, where you're close, so close, so many times, and someone will take you out on the last lap. Something else happens, a caution comes out, and everybody gets fresh tires with five to go. So many different ways you can lose these things to finally get it, Brandon. I mean, it's just, it, it's more than a relief, it, it's just sheer joy. And you can see him burning out now. Yeah, you, you learn to appreciate your wins a lot more too after going through a little bit of a spell like that, and and you could hear it in his voice when he first came into the to the interview room. He seemed almost a little bit choked up. Dude. Absolutely, and I think the guys were happy for him. And like I said before, it's always good to get one that you earn. I mean, he had the highest of the high talent. This room is stacked full of talent. But when you got Hacker, Johnson, and Fortan there chasing you, you've done something. So he earned it. He's going to take a Polish victory lap here. And all in all, uh, just a great event. Uh, they got they got a great league going here, Brandon. They do, man. And you can tell the class of the field. You know, everybody in here really raced hard amongst each other a lot of close side to side racing and and it's, it's, you can tell it's just tough to win these things man and and like martin said it's been a while since he's won a point they points paying event and to finally get one done tonight that's that's got to be thrilling for him yeah it certainly is and of course i hope you enjoyed it at home and we'll have this every monday night it's the north south racing league here at 9 p.m but here from Phoenix, I'm D.D. Said He is Brandon Bass, and that wraps it up. We'll see you right here next time on Wind Tunnel TV.